गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द न्यू नॉवल हार्ट ऑफ डार्कनेस रिटर्न बाय जोसेफ कॉन्ड्रेड बट बिफोर आई एक्चुअली गो टू द नॉवल इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर मी टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू जोसेफ कॉन्ड्रेड अ राइटर ऑफ द ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी बेसिकली बॉर्न इन द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी बट ही रोड मोस्ट ऑफ हिज वर्कस विच स्पेशली दन वन वी आर गोइंग टू रीड इन द ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी एंड यू ऑल नो दैट वी आर रीडिंग मॉडर्न नॉवल दैट इज द पेपर यू नो दैट हैज़ बीन असाइन टू अस ओके कमिंग टू जोजफ कॉन्ड्रेड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सो लेट्स लर्न समथिंग अबाउट हिम द नॉवलिस्ट हु रोट हार्ट ऑफ डार्कनेस अ नॉवल विच हैज़ बीन एडमायर्ड अ लॉट यू नो एट ऑल प्लेसिज ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड सो कमिंग टू हिज लाइफ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स लर्न समथिंग अबाउट हिज अर्ली ईयर्स so he was born to polish parents polish parents means that he lived in poland and it was in 1857 that he was born in russian ukraine on december 3 1857 his father's name was apollo and he was devoted you know to polish independence and that was a time when so many hurdles were there in his life life was very difficult for him he was accused of certain things he was arrested because it was believed that he was engaging himself in some anti national activities against the russian government and as a result of it he was punished and he was sent you know in exile four years of exile were given to him life became difficult for this little boy as well as his as well as his mother so he was only four and a half years old at that time and the harsh climate you know which his wife that is his mother had to face at that time was of course it was inclement and she could not tolerate it her name was evelina and camp line life being very very hard she died of tuberculosis so he did not have a very protected childhood very difficult time you know it was ahead for him so after the death of his mother he was left to the care of his father and as you know his father also did not have very good relations with the government with the administration but it was his now duty to educate his son as best as he could he was a man of letters and an educated man and he had translated you know french and english language literature into polish into the polish language polish language is the language of poland so that way he tried to educate his son also but he did not survive for long so things became all the more difficult and it was in 1869 that apollo that is his father he died of tuberculosis so the clouds were overhead and now the responsibility of this child was shifted to his uncle tosso something like that i cannot read it properly so that was the name of his uncle and for about the next 20 years he was brought up by his uncle it became the responsibility of his uncle and his uncle was like a father to him he attended school in croco and then he gave him a lot of love and comfort also but joseph conrad joseph spelled as j o z e f so he was dissatisfied with his school he did not want to continue there because it was very boring very unromantic but he was a child you know who was very passionate and romantic by nature so static life was not acceptable for him so what he wanted to do was that he wanted to go to the sea so that was his basic you know interest and in order to go to the sea yeah, he got one opportunity you know to attend the austrian naval academy in pola but he rejected that opportunity but later on things began to change and he departed for marsilis and about 20 years of naval adventure so about 20 years he spent there loved the sea life changed completely for him so life became adventurous you know for this young man and now most of the life was spent at sea so we have his adventurous years so life changed for him he arrived at marsilis with an annual allowance of only 2000 francs so it was very difficult for him you know to maintain even his daily needs manage his daily needs so he was very dejected he was deep in debt 
dead and at that time called and you know he attempted it is believed that he attempted suicide under these conditions but somehow life was good his uncle arrived at marcellus and he paid off his debts and then managed to help him to tide over this difficult moment so this is how you know things began to change for him then after that he turned his attention to the british navy so english as you know was a language he did not know at all because he was basically a polish belonged to poland and this language was foreign to him so but anyway he was interested in joining the british navy and therefore this you know vessel there was a british british vessel by the name mavis so first he sailed to sail to constantinople and then after that the mavis that is that vessel vessel or boat you can call it or the ship it returned to its home port and then for the first time conrad reached england that was the first time when he actually saw england he reached england he had a new experience in his life but there he had no friends he felt very isolated and the next basic problem that he faced was that he did not know the language so without knowing the language it was very difficult to manage but then you see he was very very determined and his determination helped him later on to learn the language and though it was very foreign to him he did not know even the grammar of the language or anything of the language but still he tried to learn it so only fragments of facts of conrad's life during the next 10 years are known nothing much is known about him but anyway he cleared his papers the third made papers in 1980 and his masters paper in 19 in sorry in the 1880 and his masters paper in 1886 so somehow he managed to overcome the language barrier and started learning english also in 1886 conrad became a british subject and after becoming a british subject he first tried his hand at writing he had never done this work but then he started writing so first of all when he wrote short stories it was not a very good story very unsuccessful he submitted it for a british fiction contest but it was not accepted positively so that was a sort of a failure in his life but anyway he tried to confront all these adversaries and move ahead so gradually he was becoming less and less content with his life at sea things were very very boring and he wanted to move out of this boredom so he made efforts for that and as a result of this boredom with the new familiar sea routes he became obsessed with the idea of africa so reference to africa is something very very important because we have cross references to africa even in a book like heart of darkness which he wrote later on and he wrote this book on the basis of the experiences that he had so perhaps he had a desire to go to africa and that was prompted by a map in some street fleet street window he had seen a map when he was a young child when he was a boy and he got attracted by that map and as he looked at it once he said when i grow up i shall go there so this you know reverberated in his mind for a very very long time so whatever the reason conrad was determined to secure work as a captain on one of the streamers plying the snake like congo river so congo river became a sort of an attraction for him in 1889 the congo free state was 4 years old as the republic's wealth so at that time you know heart of the heave we find references to it in heart of darkness and things changed for him he got chances you know to grow in life to become a steam you know steam captain as they say his aunt was there and this aunt of his he helped she helped him a lot in order to get this job his aunt's name was margaret she lived in brussels and she was instrumental in getting him the appointment he wanted we have references to this even in the novel when we read it so it was in april 1890 that he sailed for africa and this experience is clearly the basis for heart of darkness as i have told you earlier also 
so heart of darkness which follows closely the actual events of conrad's congo journey tells of his fascination by the mysterious white man called kurtz so he is an hypnotic personality when we read the novel you will know about him learn to know he is the major character of the novel and how he dominates the brutal tribesmen around him so all those greedy traders you know they are full of contempt for him even the marlo the main character in the novel hates him to some extent but somehow there is a reluctant loyalty which he you know, provides him he cannot deny the power of this figure of evil and of course he is a figure of evil in the novel we'll come to it when we come to the novel so this obsession with africa was very very strong and a year later somewhere in 1889 conrad returned to england so from late in 1891 through 1893 conrad is again on the sea early in 1894 he was back in london and his naval career came to an end so after that we would like to read something about his literary years the name of the novels and the works that were written with him are before you so in the first phase of his life he wrote you know important works like elmer's folly and outcast of the islands the rescuer the nigger of the narcissus and then in the later you know decade the next decade 1902 onwards said he wrote the heart of darkness youth a narrative and two other stories betwixt land and sea and many other such works which actually you know in a way encouraged him so when he finished his novel elmer's folly he was very much encouraged by garnet r edward garnet who was his publisher and he asked him to write you know more novels it was in 1894 that this novel came in a came off the press in late 1894 and then at his insistence conrad began his second novel so this is how a man who never knew english even actually learned so many things and became a great writer of his time so it was in 1914 he visited poland once again he was trapped by the outbreak of the first world war you know it very well from 1800 and, sorry 1914 to 1918 we have this first world war so he was trapped by it and was very very sad also very upset by all that had been happening but then he had to devise methods to return to england he returned to england 5 months later and the experience that he had during those 5 months left him very very depressed and exhausted and then his health began to fail he was uncomfortable on this at this on this level and on august 3 1924 sitting in his room he died of an heart attack so this was the end many of his works were not even published by then there was an incomplete novel which was published later and life had been very very difficult for him but it is really remarkable that a middle a man of his you know bringing up a man who was simply a sailor once upon a time wrote so many novels about 14 novels and about 8 volumes of tales have been written by him so we must recall that conrad born to another tongue that is the polish language and untrained in the grammar and syntax of english or in fact any of the languages became one of the great stylists of the english language so it is very astounding it is very surprising that a polish sailor should have done so much to completely change the concept of prose fiction so he is known recognized for the new type of prose fiction that he wrote okay coming to the basics of his life or the ideas on life and art which he basically held so it is believed that he believed or it is believed or i can say the writer believed in the spirit of service not the spirit of adventure so though most of his novels you know they are with the written about adventure even in heart of darkness we have a lot of adventure but there those were not his basics of life he believed that the world rested on a few simple ideas so simple that they must be as old as the hills and he believed in finality so that was his the thought process of his life 
so he believed that every man should do his duty so he was duty bound an attitude which he developed with his long experience on the sea so when he remained in ships this is what he found there he found people shirking their duty and he realized if one shirks his duty everything would be lost so to conrad life could be meaningful only through work that produced an understanding of man's common destiny he believed that work is the only shield against evil so in order to overcome the darkness of life what you need is the you know there is hard work complete you know devotion to work this is what he believed he also believed in the spirit of service not in the spirit of adventure so in heart of darkness conrad is interested you know in all these things he intensifies this mood of adventure and at the same time the mood of service so we have certain characters like marlow who are completely devoted to the work that has been given to them so conrad was an artist who saw truth in the world of ideas so the i he felt he believed you can say that the artist did not deal with facts it was science or scientists who de dealt with facts but it was the artist who dealt with the common sense or intelligence of the readers but at the same time he made appeal to the readers only through his basic qualities of humanity and if we wish to be recognized in life we should have the qualities of humanity and this is how he worked as an artist he was respected for that his works has a special aim aim of art was to capture one moment of life and freeze it he felt fiction is a work of art and it can be it has to be frozen every moment is important and every work could be recognized successfully if there are frozen moments which reveal the truth of life then we also find that for him the art was interpretative aim of art is to capture the moments of life and freeze them so work of art is interpretative by this he meant that every work of art is symbolic it is full of symbols and as we go on reading any work as we move forward we find that new and new symbols come up the symbolic power of words goes on increasing the symbolic character gives more and more depth more and more power to our words so that is why we say the the symbols make of course things very complex also but every work of art is some open to interpretation so one person would interpret it in a different way the other would interpret it in a different way so a lot depends upon the way we think the way we observe things and our own perspective towards things so readers try to evaluate his works in different ways and there are different eva critical evaluations to his works so he believed in humility he believed in faith and he believed in the possibility of goodness goodness so he could very well understand that there was evil all around but at the same time he believed that this evil can be got rid of there is not impossibility of getting rid of this evil we can get rid of it through our humility through our faith and the saying that there is impossibility of getting rid of evil is something very very wrong so as we move ahead we move towards the technique that was adopted by conrad so when we talk of the technique adopted by conrad we find even when we read a novel like uh, you know this heart of darkness that he organizes small stories if we see it has been divided into three parts and in every part there are small incidents that have been connected one by one in order to give shape to the novel so organization of small stories themselves you know isolated stories connected or woven in a beautiful manner is the technique that he adopts and after secondly we find that his works have appeal to the senses they are aesthetic all art is properly sensuous aesthetic rather than intellectual he believed and it is through the appeal to the senses that conrad makes his approach 
So when I say appeal to the senses, it means that it appeals to our sight. We may there may be certain scenes which we would never be able to forget. Smell. As you read the novel, you can even if you can feel the smell, you can feel it. Then there are certain sounds which un, un imperceptibly remain with us even when the novel has been said. So you get a feeling of touch, you get a feeling of taste. So all these impressionistic effects are very strong in Conrad's narratives and in Conrad's own words to quote, My task which I am trying to achieve is by the power of the written word to make you hear, to make you feel. It is before all to make you see that and no more and it is everything unquote so this is what conrad fell then after that in his stories we have you know he avoids commenting on his own reactions to dialogues actions and situations it, he lets the story as it is leaves it for us to decide what is there and have develop our own point of view so in order to do this he has a special narrative method and that narrative method is that rather than narrating the story himself, he does not narrate the story himself. Instead, he adopts the device of having a story told by a character in it. For example, if you come to Heart of Darkness, there is a character Marlowe who narrates Heart of Darkness. So, he uses a different type of method. Another device that Conrad uses as far as this technique is concerned is the time shift technique. We also call it working back and forth means that his works or the incidents in his works they do not move in chronological time instead it is human time so in order to give it the right shape he may you know shifts his incidents episodes as you can call them back and forth sometimes he moves into the past and sometimes he moves into the future depending upon the need of the time in order to discover meaningful relationships meaningful relationships he makes these changes and you know this is a particular you know characteristic of the 20th century when we enter the 20th century be it virginia Woolf or be it some other writer we find even dh lawrence this back and forth movement is very very characteristic of this particular century it is this process that Conrad tried to duplicate, forcing the reader's mind to go through the same sort of movement it would if he were actually involved in the experience. So when you are actual participant, your actions and your thoughts, they do not move in a chronological order. Chronological order means date-wide order or time-wise order. This is what happens. Instead, there is a dramatic shift that goes on taking place in terms of time. Then, his time shift of course technique is there and there is another important technique that is cinematic technique. Cinematic technique means moving in the motion manner of a motion picture. So he allows his readers to move about, to look at things from a distance, to look at things very closely and sometimes even things or events they are superimposed upon one another. So you are not observing things from one particular fixed position. Instead, you observe it from different distances and it is like a cinema where there is a movement going on and then after that we find his the sentences that he writes if we go on to read his works now even you know a work like the heart and dark heart of darkness is a novella they do not even call him a novel some people call it a short story some people call it a novella because there are only about 100 pages or so but Everything has been woven in such a wonderful way. So just like it is like the technique, you know, used in poetry where maximum effect is produced with the minimum number of words, the meter, the rhythm, the form, everything is taken care of. And Conrad also does the same thing and they are epigrammatic sentences, I would call it. So this is one speciality, a characteristic of him and as you read Heart of Darkness, you find there is a crucial interplay of words and phrases dealing with white and black, light and dark, good and evil. There is a lot of pairing of antithetical terms and all these things have been very wonderfully done by him. There is certain paradoxes have been very beautifully solved and created and 
ne, ne, all this brings me to the end of today's lecture so we admire conrad for his great contribution to english literature to his writings and we wish that we know more about him or not tomorrow we shall come to the novel directly to the novel i shall introduce you to the novel heart of darkness and after this introduction give you a background to the novel so that you can understand the novel better thank you students so